Y'all, we used to be able to tell men that we're gay or we're in a relationship or we're married, and that would normally, like, make them go away. But this new age man, <laughs> you could be like, I got 10 kids, and they'd be like, I got cornflakes. <laughs> you could be like, hey, I'm homeless. They'd be like, I got a four-bedroom house. You could be like, I got a broken leg. They'd be like, I got two good ones. What? <laughs> When are you hitting men with these Mayweather level style defense? Is it like when you randomly walking on the street? Because I'm pretty sure if you was at the club and a guy offered you to buy you a drink, you're not going to be talking about your 10 kids. What's wrong with y'all? Like, for real? Like, what's wrong with y'all? I be in awe sometimes. I be like, you know what? I got five kids. I'm crazy. I'm psycho. They be like, that's all right. I got the bat for you to bust out my window with. I got insurance, baby. It's all good. What? what? You can't be. You can't be serious. When I was single, I just had too much pride. The moment you hit me with some bull ass excuse, I'm gonna walk away. It's never that serious. When I used to be dating. I had a rule. If I text you and you didn't respond back to me, the next time we spoke was if you reached out. I never double text. For all the millennials out there who think they're alpha males because they got the, the beards, the skinny jeans, and the button-down front shirts, that don't make you no alpha male. And anytime you have to declare you're an alpha male, you're really a motherfucking weenie. I'm going to keep it real, man. When I was growing up, with nobody talking about alpha male or I'm this dude, knew you were the dude because you put in work and because mother smelt it. They sensed it. They smelt it. When I went to the gym at school as a freshman, you see homies down there hitting uh, two plates, three plates, you knew that they were motherfucking alpha males and that they would bust your mother head. Wouldn't all this talking wouldn't all this, oh, I've been training and all this shit. Motherfuckers always train. You train to whoop ass. You train to be a man. Stay dangerous, my friend. Before the internet, before alpha male being associated with the red pill movement, I've always thought that the alpha male was dangerous. In every situation, when you step in a room, you exude a certain energy that people did not try. I feel as though a lot of the dudes now that we perceive as alpha male that are on the internet giving advice, I don't see them as being alpha males, you know? I don't think a lot of them will bust a grape in a fruit fight. It's just because you have money does not mean you are alpha male. It's a lot of that get money now and they feel as though they can start giving advice. No. Okay, so story time on how I cheated and the person that I cheated with literally did me the worst way. So let's go ahead and start from the beginning. I got up this morning looking good, feeling good. I said we finna have a self-care day. So my first thought was Popeye's because how could you start a self-care day without putting some food on your stomach, right? You just overall cheating because Popeye's is not self-care. Popeye's is cheating. You started off bad. And I just knew I was going to have a good day because, baby, they felt like working. Them ghost pepper wings was so good and fresh. It's me being real big back, sitting outside the nail salon just chomping down. You so think? let's get into the tea of what really had happened. I finished my food walking the nail salon. They say that my nail tech is not here. He's still on vacation. So I'm like, give me the next best person. The lady was like, the next best person, she got somebody and she got somebody after this person as well. So I said, okay, give me the next best person. So I sat down and waited, and he was finally ready. Y'all see the way he turned my hand around to make sure he laid them nails straight on my fingers? Yeah, that was a confidence booster for me, because I just knew he was finna eat these nails right on up. Baby, I was wrong, because the way that acrylic looked, I should have known that was a red flag right there. But I let him keep going. When I finished, my nails was so ugly, and then they had the nerve to charge me $90. So looking from right here, they don't look too bad, right? I cried the whole way to my lash appointment. Like, I just could not believe this man really played with my nails like that. This is how my nails look like in real life. Like, let me know. Do y'all think he played in my face? Like, because would y'all have paid $90 for these nails? Let me know in the comments. I don't know no better. They don't look bad to me. I don't know about no $90. I guess this is the equivalent of cheating on your barber. You shouldn't do it. <laughs> you shouldn't do it. You don't cheat on your barber at all. To be quite honest with you, I don't have a barber now. My barber is me. My barber is me, bro. I mean, I ain't. I, I gotta cut my hair, but anytime y'all see me get a haircut on here, it's me. I refuse to be paying fifty to a hundred dollars for a haircut, and I ain't knocking the barbers for getting their money. When COVID came, 
Them prices went up. Them boys said, okay. I am risking my life being all up in your face giving you a shape up. So from now on, these haircuts is $100. And I feel them. I feel them. It just ain't for me. <laughs> hey, bro, where y'all be, where y'all be finding these things from? Where do y'all be finding these? Listen, I'm gonna keep saying it. I know it's about twenty-five thousand of you guys that watch these videos. That still haven't subscribed. Hit that subscribe button. Come on now. We almost at 100K, man. We almost at 100K. And follow me on the gram. Follow me on Instagram. Hi. Hi. Oh, girl, nice to you? meet you. Nice to meet you. I'm fine. Nice to meet you. I can teach you so many words. You want to learn words? <laughs> okay. okay. I know one. Let me have a try. I know one. Let me have a try. What's up, slime? Ooh! Oh, yeah, you off to a good start. Oh, hell yeah! Yes! Yes! Hey, oh! Somebody said, don't teach the Chicago words. That's exactly what I'm about to do. So, this is what you're going to say. Instead of what up, slime, you going to say, yeah. what's the word, gang? What's the word, gang? Oh, fuck it! Bro, you can't take black folks nowhere. Why he teaching her the Chicago lingo? And she looks so innocent. <laughs> <laughs> you such a fast learner, like shit, making me feel so good. You gonna say, "Hey, peep this, peep this, peep this." You gonna say, "What's the word, gang?" On phone them grade. What's the word, gang? The forgot. You got it though. You on phone them grade. On oh, phone them, yes. Yeah. <laughs> but and uh, you want to learn some? Um, do you want to learn some like um, dirty words? Yes. Like how to say f words in Chinese? Yes, please. It's, what's how? What's how? <laughs> what's how? That's right. <laughs> yeah, that's right. What's how? How do I say? How do I say sit the f down? <laughs> oh, this one is really hard. Get what ta ma de zuo xia. Get what ta ma de zuo xia. Get what ta ma de zuo xia. What's up? Oh my god, you are so smart. Thank you are good. It's not so. Better than me. You're it's in my blood. Better than me. He probably say something stupid. Okay. And my uh, 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 a train that. <laughs> She don't even know what he mean. Oh, I knew he was finna say something stupid. Yeah. My a train that for real. All right, Zoe. <laughs> hey, Blaine. I said, I said, my a train that. She said, oh, yeah. <laughs> Bro, hey, bet. Me and my coworkers have had these conversations before. Have any of y'all ever dated an Asian chick? I haven't particularly dated an Asian chick, but I have, you know, I have done the nasty with one. And, um, yeah, bro. <laughs> I felt like Godzilla. That ass, I felt like Godzilla. You know what? Let me, let me stop. <laughs> I'm, let me stop. <laughs> That's about the coolest shit I've ever seen in my life. But I'd never do it. You lift him. 
this era of the internet, do you ever randomly find yourself thinking about just how wild everything used to be? It was madness. Teleport yourself back to the early 2000s. Only 30% of people even had access to the internet directly Facts. in their home. And Facts. most households only had one computer. But there Facts. were like five parts to it. Like you had the monitor, but you also had a separate keyboard, a separate mouse, some of them speakers. And you would sign into the internet using dial-up technology. And it would take like 10 minutes. We used to wait 10 minutes just to get on the internet. Before Google, there was this search engine named As Jeeves. Before Apple Maps, there was MapQuest. You would go to this site and you had to put in your current location because he didn't know where you were. There was no current location button. Bro, I forgot about MapQuest, bro. I remember we used to use Yahoo Maps. I wonder what happened to Yahoo. You put in your destination and then it would give you turn by turn directions that you had to print out and take with you on your journey there. And Facts. before Facebook, there was MySpace. There was this section on MySpace called your top eight. You had to rank your friends. But before MySpace, there was AIM. It was an instant messenger. Yes. You only talked to people who were also online at the same time that you were. And this era of instant messengers and chat rooms is where internet lingo first began. Remember when there were people who had no idea what LOL meant? And this era of the internet is also to thank for why music is so accessible nowadays. Sites like Napster and LimeWire allowed people to download music and movies for free, which was a mind-blowing shit. Before Facts. sites like LimeWire, everyone used to have to go to like a Circuit, Circuit City or something City. and buy an entire album for $15. What do you think? Early 2000s? Best era of internet? I ain't gonna say it was the best era of internet, but I do feel as though now we have access to too much. And it's causing problems. Too much access is changing the way people think. The data market is different. The job market is different. Even though, you know, the internet has definitely changed the job market. Because, shoot, this is a job for me. And <laughs> I literally get paid to talk to my friends over the internet. I'm going to end this video with a story. So, early 2000s, this is when my brother started college and this is when the aim chat rooms was popping so my brother was talking to this young lady while he was in maryland in capital college and the young lady was from brooklyn he had set something up he was coming back home to visit so he met the young lady and <laughs> now i think about it this shit was foul he met the young lady and uh she wasn't who she said she was dog now she wasn't no man or nothing like that but you know the picture she had up and the person that showed up was two different people. And my brother was not feeling it. And he left in the living room with me. Now I think about that shit, yo. He, he was an asshole. You left this young lady in the fucking living room with your 10-year-old brother while you was in the room playing the PlayStation. I don't know how long she was there. She was there for at least two to three hours in the living room with me, bro. And you could tell she was just, like, uncomfortable. And then he came out. He's like, oh, my mother about to come home. And I guess he dropped her back home wherever she... You know what I'm saying? Wherever she, she lived at or whatever. I didn't know back then, but I experienced catfishing. Even my 10-year-old mind could perceive that. I was like, oh, 